So I wanted to ask you about sort of your history with Linux and your history with Nix, because you mentioned you've you've been doing this for a couple of years now. Um, but when did you start using Linux, and when did you eventually find your way to Nix, and like what what actually attracted you to it? So originally, mm -hmm. I started. I'm gonna get kind of a bit more of like me starting as a programmer. Okay. So when I was 11, mm -hmm. I wanted to build a website. This was back in 2012. Most website builders, as far as I am aware, were paid, and it's hard to install when you don't have like admin access on a Windows laptop mm -hmm. to just install arbitrary programs. Right. So I took out Notepad, and I learned HTML. Uh, some time later, I learned JavaScript, mm -hmm. CSS, and then I learned Python, Ruby, Lua, all that. Eventually, I started doing, getting into like, oh, what's Linux? Mm -hmm. And I was in Scouts at the time, and my Scoutmaster, uh, he used to be, a, he might still be, I'm not sure, uh, a like a administrator for a school district, mm -hmm. and so. He got me into the idea. I started out with Ubuntu. I think it was like Ubuntu 12, 11, whatever, somewhere around that time. Okay. This is like 13 years ago, so I don't remember everything. And basically from there, I started learning things like Java and how to make Minecraft mods, how to use lightweight Java game, lib or game library to make like do OpenGL stuff. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. Uh, then eventually, I don't know how. I was like, I want to build an operating system. Uh huh. And at this point, I was in middle school. Uh huh. It's so, time, yes. So I found the OS Dev Wiki, and I got a Hello World. And since then that's been a large thing of what I've done is mm. being able to do systems programming and doing stuff like learning assembly in a week and learning all these different things for systems programming. And eventually I s switched around random distros. Like I used Fedora at some point, eventually I reached high school. I was like, I've been using Ubuntu for however long. Mm -hmm. It's time for me to use Arch. Mm -hmm. And so the morning before school, one day, I think this was like sophomore, mm. I was like, it's time to install Arch Linux. <laughs> Big mistake. Because my first period class was writing. And the first thing we needed was Google Docs. And guess who didn't have network access? <laughs> I forgot to install WPA Supplicant. So I had to pull out an Ethernet cable and get that all set up and figure out how to get networking working and all that. And eventually, a few years later, I was like, oh, I heard about Void Linux. Mm -hmm. I'll try Void. And then... Uh, at that time, I'd been living in Oregon my entire life, and so we kind of get into 2022 now, and I moved down here for family reasons uh, to uh, Southern California, and the thing with the U.S. is every state is kind of like its own country, right, right, and so things are different across states, and the problem I ran into was. The power at the new house is a little bit different. Okay. To the point that my overclock would kill my system. <laughs> so that's a new one. So, so guess whose file system corrupted? Oh, oh, my file system corrupted. I'm like, uh, everything is gone. So I was like, I've heard of this Linux distro called NixOS. Mm -hmm. My current drive is not going to be recoverable. The EXT 
partition is completely screwed up. Mm -mm. There's no poet's chance of recovering that. So I got the ISO. I installed it. I had no. I had a basic Linux system. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, what more can I do? And I just kept on learning, kept on figuring things out. Eventually, I was like, oh, this package called Lens, which is for Kubernetes stuff, is out of date. Mm -hmm. No one else is updating it. There is one maintainer, but he hasn't touched it in like six months. I'll figure out how to update the package. So I did it. Mm -hmm. I was like, this other person isn't going to maintain it, so I'll pick it up as a maintainer. And from there, I kind of did other stuff. I eventually picked up Zig again. Mm -hmm. And this was two years ago now. And then I was like, oh, this new version of Zig needs a newer version of LLVM that's not in its packages. Guess I'll package it. So I built it. Pull request it. Okay, I got that done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I play around with some other stuff or some other things. I was like, oh, I need another version of LLVM. I'll update it. Mm -hmm. But now, getting to the point of uh, NixCon North America from 2024. Mm -hmm. And the person who was, main, who was maintaining uh, it mostly, it was a five people in total uh he wasn't touching it he got didn't have the time things happen with maintainers like that all the time and so i'll maintain it now and through there i kind of just did the work of cleaning up llvm because fun fact llvm isn't just llvm it has a million things to it right and so We'd been packaging LLVM versions since LLVM 12. Right. And LLVM releases every six months. And so we had like, each of those had their own version of each package inside of them. Mm -hmm. So we had like 100 files. And there's like a million duplicate lines. So I did the painstaking thing of removing every single duplicate line and folding things together so there is a common entry point for each package and each version. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I cleaned up LLVM. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then from there, I was like, I want to do more. What else is there? Oh, there's all these packages that are maintained. I picked them up. So then now I maintain SE Linux. I maintain Flutter. And I was like, oh, I want to build the Flutter engine because I want to embed Flutter into a Wayland compositor. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'll figure out how to build Flutter. Turns out Google sucks at packaging. They have this thing called Teapot Tools, which calls their own version of Python that they have pre-built from a Go binary. It is as cursed as it sounds. And... I built it and I made it reproducible. And so I maintained Flutter. And yeah, then this I was is like, why I oh. believe they recommend is it they recommend a snap package or something? I know they have a package for it. The kind of expected way you download it is you just git clone the directory and then or git clone their GitHub. Maybe I'm thinking of a different and then, dumb project then. You, then you just call the shell script, which then downloads from their binary. It, 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 it. The thing is, Google sucks at packaging. I can tell, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, from there, I got Flutter, the Flutter engine packaged, and then I was like, oh, we have the standard environment which provides things like the C compiler, your core utils, mm -hmm. all that. No one's maintaining that. And so now at the point of October of last year, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'll pick it up. And 
So now I maintain the standard bar, I mean, along with like five other people. And at some point I got a commit bit. And so I can break nicks for everyone else <laughs> and stuff like that. And then eventually because of the other LVM stuff I do, like, oh, I want to get Clang running inside of UEFI. I got a LVM commit bit and all that. And we're up to today now. Having that, uh, having that kind of power is, uh, is fun. A friend of mine, uh, just got employed with KDE V and was given master branch commit rights on KDE. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, in Nix packages, we kind of want to limit how much the commit bit can do. But mm -hmm. the problem is, the yeah, was like, no, committers can do a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, yeah. Committers can do kind of abuse things, but everyone kind of doesn't because we're good. Mm -hmm. That um that story you had about installing Arch just before class, I've brought this up on the podcast a number of times. Um, this is very reminiscent of the stupid way I did it. So I was in my second year of university at the time. I installed it like the day the holidays ended. So I was in class with a TTY, uh, just getting, th trying to like connect to the university network for the entire class. Now, the fun part about the class is I was in a cloud development class. So, you know, it's kind of on brand. I'm, I'm using Linux. We're doing, we're doing Linux things. Um, but I didn't get much, I did not get much stuff done during that class for that first, uh, first day. Or the first couple of days after that, because there was a lot of stuff that I just didn't really think about. Um, there was some software we needed to have that I didn't really think about. So, uh, I had to set up VMs like for some Docker? of that. Uh, no, for other classes, not for that class. Um, uh oh, I had like a, a, you, um, what do you call it? Like a... Uh, a UI design class we needed some software for and we needed to use something specific because they wanted the project file for it which is always fun um so I I very much know that story myself don't install Arch or any any system you're not familiar with just before you need to use the system bad idea <laughs> <laughs> 